everybody, welcome to the final part of the TransLab shift kit video. Okay, now we're going to lay the separator plate onto the channel plate of the valve body. This solenoid plate that we're going to put on has two dowel pins to locate everything. I'm going to put that down and just kind of by eyeball make sure all the bolt holes are centered. When you get to that point, you're going to get these two short bolts and you can put them in this plate hand tight. Okay, next we're going to put our solenoids on. Um, this being a 1G has three solenoids. What you're going to want to look out for is that there's an O-ring on each of these solenoids. Make sure that's in place. The pressure control solenoid has a rubber seal. Usually that's not going to fall out of place and nothing can happen to that, but just be aware that it's there. What I usually do first is put the pressure control solenoid on. I get two more of these short bolts, which are the same length as the ones we've just used. And we have to start them from the opposite side of the valve body. do is turn this over and you're going to see there's a ground strap on this solenoid. Take one of the bolts back out, put it through the ground strap, then I'm going to tighten them down. Now we have our two shift solenoids. As I mentioned before, the yellow one is going to be outboard, then the orange one is going to be inboard of that. We're reusing the solenoids. The wires are kind of going to be molded to a position where they were. Let's kind of route them the same way. Now we're going to have four bolts that are the same length that we're going to use to put these two solenoids on. And again, they're going to thread in from the opposite side. Now we're going to have this block off plate. What has to happen here is we have a wire bracket. We're going to have two different length bolts, a short one and a long one. The long one is going to go further inboard. Oops. The next one is going to go through this bracket that holds the wires. That's going to be the shorter of the two. Okay. Now we're going to turn this over. Tighten these bolts. I'm just kind of sending them down with this. We're going to torque them later. Now these two other bolts that we did finger tight before. Loosen the one up and put our ground strap in. Something to note is not all the solenoid types have a ground strap coming off of them. Some of them are grounded straight through the solenoid. So if you don't see that, don't worry too much about it. Now, this bracket that we took off before, we have to put back on, and it goes under this other bracket that holds the wires, like so. Now these bolts are easier to, to identify because they have little lock washers on them. 
And these I'm only going to put in finger tight because we're going to tighten them up later. Okay. Next we have our main valve body. And we're going to get the channel plate part of the valve body and we're going to put this down on top of it. Now when we do this, this bracket that's hand tight is going to engage into this area. And also be careful that you don't jostle this thing and have any of your check balls come flying out or anything like that. And what I kind of do is, is hold it up by hand. Now the bolts for this are all the same size except for one. It's a little bit lighter in color and it's a little bit shorter and that is going to go into this hole here. Now I'm going to take these down a little bit but they're still going to be loose. We still have another section to put on. Now something I failed to mention before is that you're going to have a little screen in here. Okay, so always make sure that goes back. Now we're going to have our pressure relief ball. Okay, you could use a steel ball, but what's preferable is to use the Thorlon ball out of the shift kit because that's going to be less likely to wear that separator plate out. Okay, so that goes here. Whoops. And then the other check ball goes here. Now we have our lower valve body and its separator plate. Lay that down on top here. This step is optional. I, I kind of like to do it. I have uh, a couple bolts that are studs. There's two holes here that are, are for alignment purposes. So you kind of can stick those in there to line everything up. And then you can put the rest of your bolts back. And this is where you got to be careful because there's a lot of bolts of a different length. This one with the big washer on it is going to go down in here. And I kind of take that most of the way home first. It's a real short one here. Then we have two long ones. And they go here and here. Now the rest of them are all similar in length, but we have two different lengths, so you got to kind of see. If you put them in, you'll see if they're too long, in which case you replace it with one of the shorter ones. But you could probably rewind this as you're doing it. These bolts go here and here. Then we have the final five bolts, which go here here, 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 and here. Take our alignment studs out, and we tighten down all the balls. bolts we're going to torque to 50 to 55 inch pounds. Right now we can turn it over and we're going to tighten these couple bolts that we had left loose before. This plate we're going to kind of hold against that valve 
tighten those bolts down. Now it's also a good time to make sure that this seal is in place. We discussed this in the video that deals with removing and replacing this valve body which you should watch if you haven't already because obviously you're going to need to remove and replace this thing to do the shift kit. Alright, another thing that comes up a lot is the manual valve. Alright, in the instructions it's going to have you install this little plug in there. Now to do that, there's two steps in this valve. You need to get a grinder and you need to grind out the outer part. Because what's going to happen if you don't, is when you drive this plug in, it's going to collapse it. When it gets to the second level, it's going to no longer be tight. In my opinion, the best suggestion that I can make is don't even bother with this. All right? It does almost nothing for you. People break the manual valve putting it in. It's just easier, and in my opinion, better to leave the manual valve alone and just install it in the valve body. And you're going to completely skip that step. Okay, one other thing. There's a 10 millimeter head pressure plug. Just do yourself a favor and make sure that that's tight. There's an O-ring under there, but it doesn't come in the shift kit. It doesn't usually go bad. But they can loosen up. Make sure it's tight or what you're going to have is a slipping forward clutch. But that's about it. We're done. That's all there is to it.